Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 31. Martin Jones. Martin Jones episode, not bad. It's also the first episode of 2019. We made it, happy new year. We're still here. Yeah, <laughs> not Amazing. Bad. So this week we'll be talking about not only the week in review, but also the month in review. So there's that. We'll also be talking about Joe Pavelski. We're on Joe Pavelski watch right now. So Yep, I'll talk about the blue line and uh, some of the changes and yeah. uh, some of the guys that are out. Uh, a couple other little miscellaneous things and the games ahead this week. Yeah, this is going to be a good episode. You ready to start the show? Ready. Okay, I think we should warm up for 2019. We'll do a little bit of vocal stuff. So I'm going to go like red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Got anything? Unique New York. Okay. Yeah. The that's... arsonist had very oddly shaped feet. <laughs> the tip of the tongue, the roof of the mouth, the lips, and the teeth. <laughs> So, as promised, we're going to be looking at the week in review. We had uh, three games this week, one loss, two wins, so not a bad showing, all said and done. Calgary, the, the first game. It was a rough game. A lot to talk about in that one. Yeah. Um, I thought the Sharks did okay. I mean, obviously they lost, they didn't get the result they wanted, but um, they were hanging in there for a while, and Calgary's a tough building to play in, So, um, and they're a very good team this year. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to our Pretenders episode, I would mentioned that when... Calgary, Vancouver, and uh, who's the other one? It was Vegas? No, wasn't it? Uh... Don't know, but it, Calgary and Vancouver right. were the other guys that were up there with us. Yeah. And Aaron was oh, Edmonton was the other one. Edmonton. I said Edmonton's kind of borderline, <laughs> but uh, Vancouver's definitely a pretender, and um, Calgary's the real deal, and we've seen them surging in the last month, mm -hmm. basically, um, kind of like the Sharks have been. So. It was a battle of the Pacific Division for the most part, and unfortunately the Sharks did not come up ahead. Um, there was also a late hit. Yeah. Um, well, let's start with Dell. Dell yeah. started in goal, right? So, so Dell got the start in, instead of Jones, and a lot of people were criticizing that move because they're saying, well, if Jones is supposed to be your starter, then why are we starting Aaron Dell? Um, you know, to some extent, I agree, but at the same time, I could see what he's doing. You know, we've got Colorado and then the 5-2 um, win against who did we play? Uh, just Tampa. lost to Tampa Bay. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, and I was at that game. I should remember that one. But, um, yeah, so I can see what they're doing, maybe saving Jones for those games instead. But uh, it would it would seem that if you're if you're interested in that moment in time and wanting to take the lead away from Calgary, that, yes, you should be playing Jones. However, this isn't vying for the last few points of the season. This isn't the playoffs. Uh, I could see why they would just go ahead and play Jones and or, or Dell in that situation. So I don't know. I don't. I don't put too much emphasis on the fact that Dell was in net, and that's maybe the reason why we lost or anything like that. I don't think Dell was the reason we lost that game, um, but it was just something that other people had brought up. A point, you know, why is Dell in net for this game? It shouldn't be that way. And again, I just uh, the same way that we do this show. We don't look at the moment in time. We look over the the longer stretch. And I think just that one loss. Again, I think uh, Super Key Grip Joe had said, you know, we're one on one against Calgary so far this season now. So hey, mm -hmm. it's it's a bit of a wash. It's a wash, but, yeah. man. I don't know. I see. I see. I think uh, DeBoer had mentioned that he wanted to see what Dell could do mm -hmm. um, in a big game situation. You're on the road, a divisional opponent. You could take over the division lead. Um, and he said, and Dell got hung out to dry. But in those situations, you kind of want to see. If Dell is going to be a starter, you kind of want to see what he has potential-wise, right. uh, what he can bring to the table. You want to see those goalies rob a couple of those, make a couple of those saves, and and um, steal a game here and there. Mm -hmm. And Dell hasn't been able to do that yet. Right. And it's it's not you know it's not completely on him, but it's also not completely on Jones and, and going back the other way. So yeah. um, I, I I could see why he wanted to start Dell just to kind of test him a little bit. It's still a little on the earlier side of the season. Mm -hmm. So um, like you said, it's not they're not towards the end fighting for a spot. Um, they could be showcasing him to see what he can do in a big moment. Who that knows? True. He could be on the trading table, trading block. So um, I don't know. I don't think it was that huge of a deal. I don't think we need to read too much into it. Dell starting over Jones in that game. Yeah. Considering Jones started the next two and they get two wins for the Sharks. That's a good point by you. Uh, something that was big, though, was the hit on Redeem Shimmick in that game mm -hmm. uh, delivered by Sam Bennett. Uh, who everyone in San Jose hates now. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it was a late hit. Uh, it wasn't so much a headshot. I mean, it was uh, a, a to the chest, I believe, but the, the head bounced off the ice, and that's how uh, Shimmick got the concussion in that game, it seems. So um, I don't know if there's a point you wanted to raise about that, but... 
Um, I, I just there's a lot of people upset that he didn't get suspended. Yeah. I can see why they didn't suspend him, but I don't agree with it. I yeah. think they, he should have gotten the game, mainly because it was a late hit. It was 30 seconds left in the game. It was an eight to five yeah. at that point, so um, it wasn't it. It was borderline yeah. late. Um, and the injury came from his head bouncing off the ice, not from the actual physical hit. Right. Um, at the same time, though, it, it's odd that there's a rule in place for an instigator penalty in the last five minutes of a game or an overtime where the player who gets the instigator penalty gets suspended for a game and the head coach gets fined $10,000. And the league said, because uh, Goudreau got hit right after that, Goudreau went after um, Bennett and fought yeah. him and got an instigator penalty. And um, the league went ahead and said, we reviewed this, and this is not an instigator penalty. Well, why? Because he was sticking up for a late hit penalty. Right. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't know. I think uh, with 30 seconds left in the game and you get kicked out, who cares? Sure. It, there's no punishment for it. So I think uh, he should have been fined or he should have been suspended. Yeah. Or both. So um, it was it was dirty, I think. And I and the Sharks are not going to forget when they come oh, yeah. play them again later in the season. February 7th, put it on your calendars with the big red X because that's, uh, that's going to be a good game. The yeah. body's going to be flying in that one, I think. This does raise a question, though, in the community about whether or not they should have an enforcer on the team. And it's something I had talked to some people on Facebook and... I don't know. I don't. I just don't see it. I see DeBoer rolling those four lines just like we have been, and I think that if you're looking for somebody to step up, well, Goodrow did. I mean, mm -hmm. he's not exactly a John Scott type of guy, but you don't. You're not looking for a guy that just does nothing but throws punches out there. You want him to be able to play the game uh, at a high level as well, and you know, be a threat that's out there. And you know, to Goodrow's credit, he did step up. He's not an enforcer, but he's protecting his teammates to the best of his ability. He dropped the gloves right away. He did it so, without thinking. Instantly. No, no, exactly. As soon as the hit came, he just turned, turned around, yeah. dropped the gloves. Let's go. You know, I don't care if you're going to beat me. I'm just going to stick up for my teammates. What it comes down to. And I like there was a, a quote from um, Evander Kane, I believe, after the game where he was in the locker room. He says, "You know, it's funny how guys get a little bit taller when I'm not on the ice." Mm -hmm. And it's true. So, do we need an enforcer on the team? I would say no. I would say if you are going to have a payback, you're going to have Evander Kane on the ice. You're going to have Brendan Dillon on the ice, right? Those are the two guys that are on the team that are are really going to be out there dropping the gloves. Um, whenever something like that happens. Now, this happened with less than 30 seconds left, so there really wasn't an opportunity for either of those guys to get back at him you know, sometime later on in the game. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel that you're going to go out and you know, get an enforcer on the team, you know, trade for somebody or, or whatever the case is, or sign a UFA to get somebody on the team who's just out there to protect guys because I feel like you already have that in Kane and Dylan, And that's just my take on it. So Yeah, I don't think uh, the enforcer's that position's dead, is dead in this league. Yeah. So, uh, no, you're not going to go out and get somebody, especially like a John Scott type player. So, um, I think the Sharks are just fine. Um, I think they'll just get their payback either in the standings right. or the next time they play them or in the playoffs if we have to go through them in the playoffs. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, an enforcement thing is, I think it's a moot point. Yeah. Uh, but going to the Colorado game, mm -hmm. the next one, they turn around and they come back with a win, a 5 4 win. Um, and. <laughs> It was five. A little to closer one, than a little closer. <laughs> However, they were playing in altitude. Yes. Um, and they lost two defensemen, so they're down to four defensemen. And one of them had gotten a penalty, so they're down to three defensemen in the last I don't know a couple minutes of the mm -hmm. game. So um, it was great to get the full two points. Didn't go to overtime, mm -hmm. um, and held on for the win. It was it was painful to watch because you can see. You could see Colorado getting on. As soon as they scored <laughs> that second goal, you, that little seed of doubt starts playing in your head. You're yeah. like, oh, no, here we go again. And um, they were able to hold on. So I think it was a great win. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, But Colorado is is basically like an Edmonton Oilers team. Yeah. They're a one-line team. Right. Um, and they happen to have the hottest <laughs> the hottest line in all of hockey. Uh, Miko Rantanen and Nathan yeah. McKinnon and Gabriel Landeskog. Uh, those guys are in fuego. So... Um, it's great to see, great to see the sharks prevail over them, and I think yeah. they only got one point, like combined or something, or, or not very many. They didn't score that many line. Goals. You mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So they so shut they, that line down. They did a pretty good job shutting off, down the main line for Colorado. So that's yeah, it's and it's a, an amazing thing because, you know, again, they scored. It was five to one. They scored three goals as part of that comeback. Yeah, we had a couple defensemen out and we had a defenseman uh, in the penalty box and it shows, you know, that we kind of still need these guys, you know. When you start playing a ton of minutes 
it starts eating away at you and your ability to really defend well and, mm-hmm. and to think the game the right way, uh, at least when you're not prepared to, uh, thinking that you're going to have to play that many minutes, perhaps, you know. Yeah. I'm sure Dylan had to step up uh, quite a bit in that game as well. well you score five goals, you're yeah. going to expect to get a win. So it's good that they raced yeah. out and got five goals right away and then were able to hold on. So, yeah. again, they don't ask how, just how many. <laughs> and in this case, they got another win. So Yeah. So in that game, they lose both Braun and Vlasic. And they haven't been exactly the best uh, pair that we've had this season so far, and they haven't really been up to their own expectations. But it does, it hurts. It hurts losing those two guys. Mm-hmm. So then we go into uh, playing Tampa Bay at, at San Jose. We go playing them, and we end up winning 5-2, to two, which is amazing because, again, we didn't have Vlasic. We didn't have Braun. Even Shimmick's still out of the lineup. Mm-hmm. And it should be said, Braun is on the IR, so probably about seven days for him to come back. Vlasic and Shimmick are both day to day, so that could be any time now, but they are both out. And for this game, all three of them were out. So we feel that a question in the live is it nice to have uh, Tim Heed and Joachim Ryan still on the team? And we called up Jacob Middleton, first game in the NHL, good on him. And uh, yeah, in that, in that game, it was very nice having that, that level of depth. But I don't think during the season you're going to constantly have three defensemen getting injured and being out. So I think that depth is unnecessary. But um, very nice to see that the guys stepped up. Joachim Ryan, Tim Heed, only played a handful of minutes, <laughs> but they they yeah. stepped in and, I mean, a 5-2 win against the Tampa Bay Lightning squad right. who has won, what, 17 or had a 17-game point they streak. They hadn't lost since the end of November. Yeah. But I, they, they looked, it was a comfortable win. It wasn't like, uh, they had their chances, Tampa had their chances. Kucherov, I think, had a very off night, and he's the league leader in yeah. points. So they run into two teams that are have the top scoring leaders mm-hmm. in the league, um, and I thought they handled Tampa much better than they did Colorado. Right. Um, they did have six defensemen playing. However, one of those Middleton only had five minutes of ice time, right. um, <laughs> and he only had eleven minutes of ice time. Right. So I was thinking about this before the game started. I go, okay, Vlasic and Braun are out. I bet you Carlson and and Burns are going to be close to 30 minutes. And in fact, Burns was over 30 and Carlson was at 29 and change. Yeah. So that means you have two of the top defensemen in the league, in the <laughs> world, playing 95% of the game, either together or one one or, or right. both at the same yeah. time. So um, it, it's almost like the Sharks played with four defensemen, really, uh, because he didn't, and uh, Middleton didn't get that many shifts or that much yeah. ice time. So... Um, Short term wise, I think it's going to be fine. It'll work. Those guys, Carlson and Burns, are used to getting 30 minutes a night, um, and you want your best players on the ice at the most possible, right. you know, amount of time. So um, short term, I think it'll be fine the next week. I don't think this they could sustain that for the rest of the season and have those guys fresh for playoffs, which is why they've been kind of spreading the ice time out right. before uh, Braun and Vlasic got out. Yeah. Um, but it it worked, yeah. and Tampa looked like a mediocre team when they are destroying everybody in the league yeah. in the last month and well, a half. And, and that's just part of it, too, is that you've got this team in Tampa Bay who is just this juggernaut, and you have a team in San Jose who's a very good team, but we're missing, you know, arguably what is normally our best defensive pairing and probably one of the best defensive pairings in the league, along with a guy who's finally catching a stride playing alongside, or fin- finally ha- a good partner for Burns is what I mean. Yeah. Shimmick stepped in, and he just did good right away. But it's been taking Burns a little while maybe to get good chemistry with somebody and it seemed to be working. Now you got all three of those guys out. So the question, well, not even a question that I have, but it's, it's it's almost a realization. So a decade ago, more than a decade ago, the way that you won cups and you were successful and you won games perhaps, you, you were big and you were brawny and you would slam people and it was, it was a heavy, heavy game, right? Like the Kings and the Ducks kind right. of still play. Right, right. Yeah. And, and so that shifted to okay more speed more speed that's how the sharks lost their cup everybody talking about oh the penguins that they have so much more speed they made us look slow Mm -hmm. and so that's the thing now that kills in in the nhl is speed right so i'm wondering now if and and you had used a a cool phrase i think it was not not chasing right but setting the setting setting the uh yeah setting the precedent or right you know what's going to be the the winning formula going forward and i wonder if a game like tampa bay might be a clue to that where you've got Two really solid offensive defensemen who control the play, who are solid in the offensive zone, and who possess, or are just possession monsters, right? Mm-hmm. Is that what is the new winning formula? Because every time you've got a breakout, it's the defenseman generally getting the puck and breaking it out. 
And if you've got guys that are offensively minded and they can carry the puck up and suck a defenseman towards them, that mm-hmm. frees somebody else up, right? Right. Especially a guy like Carlson who can skate like, you know, I mean, you see him just weaving in and out of people. Even his gliding, when he just glides, it's just so fast and so smooth. And in and out of, he doesn't even have to pump his legs anymore. He's yeah. just gliding in between people. Yeah. It's ridiculous, you know? So I wonder if that's kind of like what could be the new winning formula. Now it's too early to tell, obviously, because we haven't won anything yet, but it seems to be very successful in that we didn't have Braun or Vlasic or even Shimmick, and we beat the best team in the league five to two handily, right? right. So yeah. I don't know, just something maybe to keep an eye on. Um, other teams maybe trying to replicate that, getting two really stud defensemen uh, to kind of it's, break out, you know? And it's funny because those stud defensemen are, there's not a lot of those going around the right. league, and the Sharks happen to have two of them. <laughs> so, uh, I, sure, set the tone and, and set the standard for right. winning a cup, and then nobody's going to be able to produce that because there's not there's only so them. many of those defensemen right. to go around. Yeah. But that is becoming the new trend. Instead of a big, large defenseman that's going to hit people, it's going to be a smaller guy. Ryan Merkley there you being go, one yeah, of them. Yeah. Uh, Heiskanen, he's in uh, the Dallas Stars. Right. Uh, he's a 19-year-old, and he's starting, and he's a smaller guy, but... Same thing, mm-hmm. same, same, whatever. Good uh, possession. Shabbat yeah. in Ottawa, another right. smaller guy. So you're seeing that Carlson-like player, because Burns is not like no. Carlson, he's huge, but a Carlson-like player, a smaller defenseman that can really, almost like having a fourth forward out yeah. on the ice more. So um, I, you are seeing overall in the trend, people drafting those players and, and taking a chance, less of a chance yeah. now, because it's more of a guarantee that right. they're going to make the NHL. Um, so you just have to find a, a defenseman to pair him yeah. up with that's more of a stay-at-home type, bigger, more physical, and um, it's going to you know, f- cover up their shortcomings yeah. of, of defensively. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that, that game, Tampa Bay, obviously a very good game for stats for the Sharks. Uh, Evander Kane picked up two goals, and, and one of those was his 200th. Yep. So uh, congrats on you, Evander, for, for 200 goals in the NHL. That's yeah. quite a milestone. Mm-hmm. So there was that. I think uh, Burns had three assists, mm-hmm. if, I'm, if I'm right on that one. And then Eric Carlson's riding a 12-game point 12 streak. 12-game point streak. Yeah. I think he has 19 points or something in that. Yeah. That streak. 16-game span, something like that. I forget what it is. He's got, yeah. oh, well, 12 games, right? Yeah, right. So he's, yeah, 19 points. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. And, and that's what I mean. You take a look at, at these two defensemen and their ability to control the play and produce. Eric Carlson, the first 10 games that he played with uh, Vlasic, he had a really rough time. And we were saying, oh, you know, a lot of people were saying, oh, Carlson's a bust, Carlson's a bust. Yeah. And I kind of look back and I don't want to trash uh, Vlasic because I'm sure there's something he's just going through and he's going to be better in, in the second half of the season. He was already but, started to play better than yeah. he got hurt, unfortunately. Yeah, and, then, and that's the thing is, you know, you get injured right when you're starting to feel it, kind of like Joe Thornton last season, right? right? Yep. Um, but maybe that was the problem with Eric Carlson was Vlasic was dealing with something or just it wasn't working out. And so now he's working with Dylan, who's having a monster year himself as well, something we talked about a couple episodes ago and other people mm-hmm. are starting to notice it as well so um i'm just wondering you know if maybe that's what we're seeing right now is these these two good possession defensemen uh kind of driving the whole play and um you know if that's the case like you said other teams aren't going to be able to replicate that and yeah. at least this season hopefully many more years to come um we'll be able to do it yeah so that'd be fantastic <laughs> <laughs> nice so that's the week in review uh, but now we're talking about the month in review, the month of December. And uh, how do we do? Much better than November. Much better than yeah. November. November, we were like a 500 team. Yeah. And now we uh, we went 15 games, and it was 9-4-2. Uh, mm-hmm. So 20 out of a 30 possible points, which is really good. Yeah. Um, right now in the top of the Pacific, it's uh, three teams, basically. The Sharks, the Knights, and uh, the Flames. Right. So I think those three teams are going to be the top three of the division, yeah. and they're just going to kind of bounce around and interchange going all the way to the end of the season. Um, coming out of the Pacific, I mean, I don't really see any other team per se that would make it. Okay. Maybe Anaheim, just so Mike Johnson will be no. two, <laughs> two out of it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're going to be awful. Gibson's oh. going to get hurt again. <laughs> yeah. And we'll, Wow. We'll, wow, really? Yeah. <laughs> again, I'm, I'm putting a hex on him again. Um, they just can't sustain what... what and they've been on yeah, a big yeah. losing streak anyway. So, um, but yeah, that the month has been great. The yeah. Month of December has been great. A big turnaround from I guess the beginning of the season, right? And a big part of that was Carlson. And Maybe. well, and before you even talk about that, I think that the the nice thing is we did have a kind of so so November, and you're t- you're calling it a turnaround. 
I mean, if, if we did so, so, and you know, we're turning it around and doing great. That just means we haven't really done poorly this season for a long stretch. Now we've talked a lot about talking about uh, points in time as opposed to the longer stretch and, and people tend to, I don't know, um, like agonize over those individual points, like the Calgary game, for instance. Oh, Calgary's got our number and blah, 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 whatever. Um, but if you look over the, the entire stretch, I mean, geez, nine, four and two, that sounds, that sounds pretty good to me. I mean, I, you know, you can, you can pick apart individual losses and get upset about it, but when you look at the whole thing, I'll, I'll take 20 out of 30 points. Right. That sounds good to me. So, um, I guess, is there anything else on, on the month that you wanted to, to bring up, or you good on that? No, that's it. Okay, yeah. cool. Hey, Sharks are doing well. Just just leave it at that. Uh, one Shark in particular doing fantastic, Joe Pavelski. This, we're going to have Joe Pavelski goal watch, I think, from, from now on. For the rest <laughs> of the season? Yes, for yeah. the rest of the season. We'll have our little Joe Pavelski image, and we'll just tally up how many goals. We're currently <laughs> Joe Pavelski on 25 goals. Uh, we had gone back and forth a little bit about whether or not he might hit 40. I think it's a, it's a, almost a lock. I mean, 30 is obviously a lock. 30 is a lock for sure. 40, I, I mean, he'll get there. I think he'll get 40. 15 yeah. more goals between now and the end of the season. I think he could do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think 40 is not I, – I don't want to say quite yeah. a lock yet. Yeah, okay. But it, it's definitely within reach. We, there's always, knock on fake wood, there's always injuries and whatnot to take into account. So, right. yeah, he may not have half the season left. He may have a little bit less, but we hope not. We hope you're healthy, and I am not hexing you or dooming you. <laughs> Done. Okay, so there's that. Uh, what was the other next thing we want to talk about? It was the, the blue line point production. And that's another thing we kind of want to keep an eye on is the, uh, the amount of points that are coming from our blue line. And currently we've got Brent Burns, who is now leading the NHL, in by defenseman at defenseman, least in, yeah. in points defenseman scoring he's yeah. uh, he's got uh, was it forty seven points right now uh, it's, and a couple of games in hand over uh, was Morgan, Morgan Riley, Riley yeah. in Toronto um, so we'll, they'll probably bounce around a lot but sure. Burns has been amazing and Carlson's been shooting up in the standings oh yeah so he had a very slow start to the season right and now he's he's doing he's surging he's got a twelve we mentioned earlier twelve game point streak yeah. Uh, he is sitting in eighth spot with 35 points right now. Mm-hmm. So um, who knows if he's going to catch Burns? Maybe they finish yeah. one and two, yeah, yeah. which would be ridiculous. And it's also something that we had said, I think, in the beginning of the season. Like Carlson's going to get his points. Burns yes. is going to get his points. Yes. They kind of both started off kind of slow. And I think I said that they would each get their points and get around 60 to 70. Which is on pace, yeah. Right. I mean, well, Burns is more on pace for almost 80, a point a game. Over 80. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, we look at, again, if we kind of discount that first 10 games from Carlson and we just look at maybe the next 30-something games, right? Mm-hmm. He's basically point per game. You look at Burns and take the whole body of work, he's point per game. So, yeah, I think both these guys are really going to get up there in points. Now, we had a bit of a bet, not really, but where we were saying whether or not who's going to get more points at the end of the season, right? And I kind of feel like Carlson, Carlson. I think you said Burns. Okay. But um, I feel like Carlson, I don't know, he's, he might still catch him. He's only eight behind yeah. uh, in terms of... And uh, he's been getting multiple points per <laughs> game. Yeah. Well, he's eight behind on assists. I had said right. on the assists. My bad. Okay. Yeah. So points. Yeah, Burns will probably still get more points, but I feel like Carlson's going to get more assists. Burns is going to get more goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than than Carlson. Right. Will. Or he has, he has, and I still think he would get even more. Yeah. So either way, uh, again, goes back to what we were saying about you know the new winning makeup potentially. So we've got again both of these guys that are just racking up points at a point per game pace on the blue line. And helping helping the I mean, the transition up the ice and everything has that ever happened where uh, <laughs> two defensemen have led their team in scoring? That is a great question. That is a great question. I think that should be an editor's note. I, I heard the up. producer just kind of chuckle over there because he's like, <laughs> "I don't want to look that up." <laughs> so uh, if someone we can, comment in there. Like, if we can, boop, if yeah. we can't, don't worry about that sign I just made. <laughs> um, but yeah, just another great thing from the Sharks. Um, you know, Joe Pavelski, twenty five goals. Two juggernauts on the blue line, really producing, really getting going right now, and um, in some cases doing it without a, a defensive pairing. I think so. this is exactly what we had dreamed about when we did our Carlson <laughs> episode, the Carlson right. trade episode, right. of um, how ridiculous it's going to be with both Carlson and Burns <laughs> on the ice. And so going back to the Tampa Bay game, yeah. now you're seeing these guys on the ice 30 minutes each, Yes, roughly 30 minutes each. Um, they are on the ice practically the entire game, mm-hmm. one of them. 
Or both of them. And something, again, that you had brought up was how do... I think we talked about this other episode. How do you match your best defensive pairing against the, another team's best lines, especially thinking of the Sharks, where we've got multiple lines that we that we have that are very, very good. We talked mm-hmm. about having Kane and um, I was Couture, I think, at the time, or Hurdle at, at the time, on the ice at the same time. Having Couture and Meyer on the ice at the same time. Having Pavelski and Thornton on the ice at the same time. How do you match up against that? Well, other teams are going to have to try to figure out how to match up against our blue line now yeah. as well, right? Because you can't put your best defenseman out there the entire game and Burns and Carlson are playing the entire game when you yeah. combine them. So it's not just a forwards matchup that the defensive pairings, the the opposing defensive pairings are going to have a hard time matching up with. It's the whole team. It's the blue line. How do you I mean, match think that? about when you when when any team goes into plays the Kings, they go, okay, you got to watch out for Drew Doughty right. on the back end. He's going to be out there for 30 Half minutes, the game. right? Half yeah. the game. You play in the Sharks, you're like, okay, you got to watch out for Burns and for Carlson because they're going to be playing yep. 90% of the game. So there's there's almost no game plan for other teams <laughs> that will be effective enough to do anything. Yeah. So uh, I'm not saying it's good that Vlasic and Braun are out, but it's it's <laughs> nice to see the Sharks facing some adversity. Right. And also how they handle it, and also seeing these two best defensemen in the world getting major ice time yeah. for a team and playing together. So it's it's fun to watch. Yeah. And we've seen. I mean, they not defensively, but they they did very well against Tampa Bay. Yeah. And and having those two players work, whereas before we remember in episode like one or two or whatever, yeah. oh, it would never work. Well, it's great being wrong. Right. I'll tell you that. Yeah. So uh, some other guys that we wanted to to highlight here: Sasha Sasha Shem Shem. Oh boy, Shemelyevsky. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to do the yeah like right. Mary Sinaski. Anyway, Sasha, um, he played for Team USA in the World Junior Championship recently. He played seven games, two goals, four assists for six points. He was second on the team in points. Uh, just a really great showing by Sasha, and uh, looking forward to seeing what he's able to do in the rest of his career or, or his young budding career. What's what's next for him for this so. season? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're looking forward to his junior team finishing yes. up so that he can join the Barracuda again right. and uh, we'll get a much closer look at him yeah. in person. I'm sure we'll go to some of those games. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but he joined last year at the last week of the season, last two weeks of the mm-hmm. season and helped push them into a playoffs and then right. helped them win. I think they won the first round and lost the second round. I don't think they made it out of the first round. But oh, okay. um, they they basically got the team there, Yeah, essentially. Uh, him and along with uh, Chekovic. Mm-hmm. Was the the other guy? So and this is a sixth round, sixth hit. and seventh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so I ahead. mean, really, really good to see, and and a guy that's a sixth round pick, pick making it into the World Junior Championships. Uh, that's very promising. Uh, it shows a lot of heart, a lot of hard work, um, stuff that other scouts didn't quite catch. So good on the uh, San Jose scouting uh, group, I guess, and uh, looking forward to seeing what he, what he does. Now another guy that we're looking forward to seeing. The real Radil. The real Radil. He signed a one-year extension yes. today. So we'll be seeing more of him, which is great. That's good. Yeah. And uh, it was very uh, cap-friendly, I believe. It was, what, it was $750,000. Which is what? An entry-level contract yeah. extension? And if I that's guess. what he's getting paid right now, I mean, that sure helps the Sharks down the road, uh, being able to sign these uh, bigger contracts, these bigger name contracts, hopefully an Eric Carlson, for, right. uh, for instance. And Radil has uh, filled in on the both second and third lines, as well as the low utilization. Line, uh, right. if you want to call it that, <laughs> and uh, he's he's done a, a phenomenal job. He's he's scoring left, right, and center alongside of Couture and was he playing with Meyer, right? Right. And it's interesting because in that Tampa Bay game that I went to, I saw them go on the ice, and <laughs> I see Meyer, and he's just you know hulking, kind of tankish kind of guy. And then you look at Radil, and he's this hulking he's tankish kind of guy. Right? Yeah, he's and it's like it's it's tough for other teams to to deal with that. Well, you see him score goals, and he gives everyone hugs, and he's like basically. <laughs> All their heads come to like here, yeah. and he's hugging them, and he's like, "Oh, hey, here's my little kids." <laughs> he's just—he's such a giant person out there. Nice. So it just looks funny. Visually, it looks funny. You're like, "Wow, that guy's." You kind of like, "Oh, that guy's big." Then he gives hugs, and you're like, "Wow, that guy's really, really big." Really big. Yeah, yeah. Everyone else looks small. No doubt. So uh, really good to hear that he's uh, going to be back with the Sharks for the next season. I think he's got a, a young prompt. Not young, really, but he's got a promising career with the Sharks. He's what 29 years old. Uh, yeah. A little bit of a late bloomer, but that's okay. Glad to yeah, have him on board. Schimmick. They're both older. Oh, are they? Older rookies. Yeah. So either way, we'll take him, and uh, hopefully, a very cap friendly for 
for Shimika as well because he seems to be playing very well alongside Burns, and that's what Burns needs, I think, is a very steady partner. We've talked Definitely. about that too. So uh, looking forward now, we're looking at the next coming games. We have four of them this coming week. Four. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow is going to be against the Kings at home. Okay. Uh, that's going to be, you know, those games are always... I don't know what you want to say. Yeah, they're 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 tough. They're I mean, tough. It's, the Kings are a horrible team this season, but that doesn't. I don't look so much at the record. Um, you can't just write off a team because they have a, a bad record. They may not make playoffs, sure, but that doesn't mean that they're We've not lost to the Kings. No, exactly. Earlier this season, it, there are no easy games. Then exactly, there's so much parity in the league. You really can't just write a team off, right? You know, like you can maybe with like say football or basketball or something to that effect. Um, so the Kings, it's still going to be a tough game. It's still going to be, you know, you still got Kopitar. You still mm -hmm. got Doughty. You still got Kovalchuk. Quick. Kovalchuk. Kovalchuk is kind of, you know, he's so-so this season. He's starting to get a little bit yeah, better recently. Exactly. But, yeah, oh, well, he scored the game winner against no, the Sharks uh, in yeah. overtime. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll be a tough game. All right, it'll be, it'll be a tough game. Yeah. I'll say it's a tough game. It'll be a, a bruising game. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're already down two, three defensemen. Yes. Um, so we'll see how the Sharks are able to handle that. Fingers crossed we get Shimmick back um, or uh, Vlasic as well. They're, they're both day-to-day. -day, so, you know, it would be nice to have them back for this yep. coming week. And then yeah. the following night, after you're getting banged up, you're playing against Edmonton, a very fast team. Yes. So maybe we'll see the Sharks be a little sluggish in the third period. Hopefully, yeah. I'm not wanting that to happen. You're but just predicting a little right. bit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, more predicting that maybe we'll see them be a little bit slower and hopefully they can shut mm -hmm. down the McDavid line. Right. Uh, similar to the Colorado game where they shut down the top line, they can really control the game better that way. Yeah. Um, they're going to be a little bit tired, so um, that third period is going to be pretty clutch. Yeah, I kind of feel like you're going to start Dell against L.A., especially because Jones just played to the last two. So you probably kick it over to Dell for um, the L.A. game because they're kind of out of the standings there. And then Edmonton's the the one that's closer um, into into contention for the Pacific Division. You're probably going to see Jones jumping in on that one. So yep. those will be the, that's the back-to-back. Back-to-back, um, Monday, so. Tuesday. And then Thursday they're going to go to Vegas and hopefully not catch the Vegas flu. <laughs> uh, it would be great to get a win in Vegas. It's right. a, a tough building to play in. Um, it's always sweet to get a little bit revenge on the team that beats you in the playoffs the, uh, the year preceding. Right. So um, I'd like to see them go in and beat Vegas. Uh, it's probably going to be one of the matchups in the playoffs. Right. Right? We're going to have to go through one or both of Calgary and Vegas. Yep. So uh, a good... A good looking forward, looking ahead. Sure. Um, they've been surging pretty well mm -hmm. lately, too. Yeah. Um, and then following that up on Saturday, Saturday at home yeah. against, uh, who was that against? Ottawa. Ottawa. Yeah, so uh, when we went to Ottawa, when it was the return of Eric Carlson, we didn't have a very good showing. I'm expecting a much better showing against an Ottawa team inside of uh, SAP Center. So it'll be a homecoming for Chris Tierney and DeMello oh, that's and true. Bodker. Oh, and wow. Yeah, that's Three guys, right I there. didn't even think of that actually. Yeah. Wow! So how quickly we forget the guys that uh, we used to weep for, Chris right. Tierney. Yeah. yeah, I shed a single tear when that trade went down, and I didn't even think about it. Wow, tear for Tierney. That's that's just that's you know. Cute. I'm almost uh, I'm almost mad at myself for that <laughs> to be honest with you. So, uh, Chris Tierney and company, welcome back. When you guys come back, so I hope you lose. But anyway, <laughs> um, so that's what we're looking forward to uh, in the week to come here. So um, that'll be our opening for our next show. We can review, but right. that kind of does it for this episode. That's Actually, it. I do want to say one more thing here. I, you, if you noticed, we've got a couple other pieces of swag. I have to bring these back because these belong to my kids. <laughs> but um, I did go to the uh, practices and I'm. Mean, this is over like the last month or two, and get some of these pucks signed. So I got a uh, Brent Burns, Joe Pavelski. I've got Jumbo Thornton over there, and I've got uh, Timo Meyer on this side over here. Also went to the game last night and picked up this sweet one here. The Owen Nolan calls a shot at the All-Star Game bobble. I'm going to go ahead and put that there. The head doesn't really shake, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, he's got the point going on, and I noticed the, uh, the little All-Star patch on the shoulder there, and obviously it matches the All-Star uh, logo on our, our helmet here in the middle there, so um, authentic look. It's our second Owen Nolan bobblehead yeah. on the side. Yeah, this one actually kind of looks more like him than yeah. this generic. I don't even know who that is, but yeah. regardless, got some new swag, really happy about it. So, that's it, I guess. Is there anything else? Right. Well, speaking of swag, okay. you can pick up our swag in our yes. store. We got hats and shirts, and you can check it out. Just go to our website, thefinfactor.com. Love it. So I guess that's it. Uh, that's gray, it. teal, black, women's uh, V-cut in black. So any of those, your flavor, mm -hmm. we got it for you. So that does it for this episode of The Fin Factor. Thank you so much for tuning in. The very beginning of 2019. 
Congratulations again on making it. Thank you. <laughs> and, and to you as well. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and to you, the viewer. Thank you so much for tuning right. in. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode, and if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.